You gonna do a video with me? <laughs> you gonna do a video with me? I'm smack so. Okay, you're gonna hang out with me? I'm so smack. Okay. Hello, welcome. We are gonna be talking about socialization. Yep. Hello and welcome to this collaboration all about socialization. We have a whole group of homeschool moms that are joining in talking about socialization, homeschool edition. As we talk about all of these topics in this playlist, I hope that you can enjoy them below. Thank you to Rooted Home Live, Christina, for hosting this collaboration so that we could all take part. I'm just so glad that you're well, here. Socialization first, let's define ourselves here. I love definitions and it really helps me settle what I'm talking about and where we're at. So socialization, in my definition, is a way to adapt or be adapted to social norms of society. So adapting to social norms of society is socialization. So we know that the social norm of being in the public slash traditional group setting of a school to have everyone at the same age, everyone at the same emotional, physical status is not normal. That's not what you're going to get in real life. You're gonna to have to associate with grandmothers and siblings of different ages, and that's just what's gonna happen. So we can't just say socialization can be fabricated and done extremely well in this setting. And I know that might make some people mad because usually it's thrown at homeschool parents that we are not socializing our kids properly because they're home and they're not in those organized group settings. Homeschool, is a bit different. We have different age groups. Even if you have one child, you are doing it specifically, you're homeschooling that specific child and it's catered to them. So then you have that. So we can't really, you know, whatever. Here we have two different worlds and one group is saying we do it better. One group is saying, you know, I guess the stigma is we're not. And I think that we are. And let me give some reasons why. I think that the homeschool family even if you have one child or more, is going to be able to do a better job of socializing, meaning that you're adapting your family to social norms of society. Now in our family, we are Christian homeschoolers. That means that we love God and that we have Jesus in our heart as our savior. We know that we have sin and we need him so that we can go to heaven when we die. That's exactly what we have in our Christian, our Christian home school. So having an artificial environment like a public school or a group setting is not going to teach them really what we desire them to be trained with. The values and the different things that we want our children to have, is they're not going to get that in a group setting. You can't have all of that in one area. And we know the public schools and even some traditional private schools, they do not have this right as I would think as a Christian homeschool mom. I wouldn't be putting my children and their socialization and the things that they're learning for social norms in society in their hands because it's not necessarily what I value and I want to teach and I feel like God wants me to teach my children in my Christian homeschool. I wouldn't want that to happen. Now, does that mean that I keep them locked up in the basement all the time and they never socialize? No. <laughs> My children are all outgoing. If you've been here for any length of time, you know that I have a nine-year-old, which is doing third and fourth grade work, and I have a seven-year-old doing first grade, and then I have a five-year-old doing the kindergarten work, and then three-year-old that's just kind of going along with the stuff and actually learning a lot from his siblings. So nine, um, seven, five, and three. So I have a lot of kids and they all seem to be extroverts. And I feel like I'm an introvert because when I'm around folks, I get very drained. <laughs> I get very drained and I like people and I'm friendly, but it does drain me in a different way that it might energize a extrovert. So it does make things a little bit more difficult when I'm trying to socialize my kids. Now, socialization isn't a place we go or thing we do. It's what we are. We socialize. We are beings that socialize. That's the way God made us. God made us. And you even think back in the Garden of Eden that God walked in the garden and Adam and Eve walked along with him and talked with him. We are meant to be social beings. God made us that way. We're meant to have relationships. We're meant to be friends. And that's the way things go. No man is an island. You've heard that before. <laughs> we are to be friendly to each other. We are better together, especially if we're going in the same direction. We have the same values 
and purpose. So we do, as our family, try to associate with families that have the same values, the same outlook on the world and things that we should implement into our children's lives. And to have something different might be a little bit weird, but we do get together with other people. They're not exact carbon copies of us and we can learn things from them, whether it's we don't wanna do that or hey, let's do that too. <laughs> One thing in particular that I've learned social wise, which has helped me along in my homeschool life, I actually learned from a friend. She has four boys as well. And she said, you know, we have to have quiet time. And I remember my mother-in-law saying this as well. You have to have, you have to have time. So we take an hour a day. And of course that time is pretty much over right now, but they're playing nicely. Uh, we try to take that time so that we can be doing something we wanna do and that we are just decompressing from all of the stress of being social. Cause that can be a stressor in a way uh, to even introverts, extroverts, whatever. It's just, it's, it's working out that um, communication and working together. So it can be a problem. <laughs> Of course. All right, so what about that stigma that homeschoolers are socially awkward and maybe hypersensitive and cannot adapt to social environments that are different than what they're used to at home? I'll tell you that's completely wrong. I came from public school, my husband came from homeschool life, and uh, well, let me tell you, or let me ask you, and you'd probably be right, who is more socially well-rounded? It's not this girl. <laughs> I'm learning as I go, but it's different. It's different growing up in the homeschool world. And if you've met someone and they've admitted that they're homeschooled, sometimes people are like, you? Really? No. And they wouldn't believe it because they're judging according to the social and interactive quality of that person. Are they able to socialize and work with others? Yeah. So we don't want to steal this from our children. We do want them to be socially well-rounded. We want them to have real social interactions. So we wanna be intentional. We want them to get out of the household. We want them to meet with people, be with other folks. And it's good for you, mama, too. Your mental health is on the line. And be around folks at an appropriate amount of time per week and so on. So you have to judge that for your family. Do you need to set up going to sports groups, co-op, Sunday school, a VBS, a church group, a church now, You program. don't wanna be too busied, but it's good to have an organized learning environment for your children to learn about being in that group. That way that they can stay out of that stigma that they can only talk to their family. And then the public school or the traditional school then have that stigma that they can only talk to people their age or people in their social status or whatever. We don't want to have that. We don't want to have that stigma that I can't play with older kids or I can't play with kids that aren't my siblings or cousins or whatever they're used to. So be consistent, make an effort to get out and about, have real social interactions. Now maybe you're gonna be around some kids that are mean and unkind and unfriendly and rude. Maybe they're your kids that are doing that. <laughs> they're gonna see that real social reaction if they're not friendly, they're not gonna have friends to play with. No one's gonna want them to be coming. When they see them coming, they're gonna be like, oh, here comes so-and-so, you know, he's gonna steal my toy or whatever. We also don't want it to be that there is a stagnant or a fabricated fake social environment that the kids get somewhere and, oh, you have to share your toys or you have to be friendly, you have to play with them. If it's not a natural thing, if it's not something that they want to do because there is a social reason, like the person's mean or unkind or teasing or hurting them secretly and whatever, sneaky wise, that's what kids do. Kids are mean. You know, you've been a kid before, right? It has to be that there. And there also needs to be acceptance and just to try by trial that not everything's going to be socially perfect. People are not perfect. We're not perfect. And we have our strengths and our weaknesses and being around others is going to help us. Back to our definition, adapt your children to social norms of society. Think about how they're gonna have to interact at a job, at college, at work. Are they gonna need to be kind and considerate? Are they gonna need to avoid the folks that are gonna be causing them trouble? Are they gonna need to be friendly but not to a fault that they're being abused and being treated unkindly? All of that. Are they going to accept others that are not in their social group, not homeschooled, not in their family, 
maybe not even in their church group or what have you, but accept them as they're able to socialize. They don't have to be friends forever and do all things with them and be bosom buddies until the end of time. They don't have to, but they need to do what is appropriate. What would Jesus want your children? If you're running a Christian homeschool and that's your value, how would you want your children to react to a social situation? Now, I'm not speaking from <laughs> a wealth of uh, success or anything. I'm still working at it. My children are still young, but I am trying to diligently train how to work socially and I'm growing as well. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, for, uh, Christina Franco, for having us here from Rooted Home Life. Please check out the playlist below and thank you everyone who has participated. I hope you enjoy this video and we'll catch you next time.